Welcome into The Rock Pod, produced for the Royal Oak Michigan Chamber of Commerce. I am John Gay from Jagging Detroit Podcasts. I am Lisa Baby, a realtor with Keller Williams Advantage. Excited for today's guest. She is Kayla Lopez of Good Business. She's a corporate consultant, corporate executive turned consultant with experience growing startups and building high performing teams. She spent time in a multitude of industries, including mortgage, banking, automotive, manufacturing, healthcare, food service, and quality. And the single common thread in all of them is the need for teams to perform. Welcome to the podcast, Kayla. Thank you so much. Excited to be here. Great. So, Kayla, how did you get into consulting? And can you explain to everybody here what exactly consulting is? Yeah, so I think the most simplified definition I've heard for consulting is someone who gets compensated for providing expert advice, essentially. And I say this more to to paint the picture of the opportunities that I've had. In my 16-year career, I have been promoted about 14 times, which means that I was invited into all different places and spaces in all different types of industries. And so what sometimes takes people 15 to 20 years of experience to get, I was able to get in about a decade. So I was involved in day-to-day conversations and in many of those cases, working my way up from you know an entry-level employee to a leader or a senior leader or an executive. And so it really gave me a broad spectrum of different experiences that I'm able to apply. And because I've worked in so many different industries, it just allows me kind of this aerial view of a lot of different components of business and some creative ways. So I actually started my career in food service. So I went to culinary school, ran out of high school for my first undergrad. Yeah, (laughs) that was shout out to everyone who's worked in food service. It is so intense, but that's where I learned a lot of problem solving and, you know, resilience on the fly and really being able to make decisions. And I attribute, you know, a good amount of my success to that, to working in that industry. So again, huge shout out to anyone who works in restaurants or food service. It's an incredibly rich uh, culture that just teaches you so many skills. I think it should be mandatory that everybody has to work in the food service industry for at least six months to one year of their life. Like it should just yeah. be a college credit. <laughs> yeah, honestly. And I think people would have a lot more respect for servers and cooks and tip a lot differently if that were the case too, Lisa. Yes. Oh my God, that's so true. And it, it's so hard to describe to someone who hasn't been in it. I would say a parallel that's similar is retail. Like if you, you know, you've worked in retail, I did that for a little bit as well, but <laughs> it's a different environment from any experience you've ever had in the corporate world, uh, for sure. So can you talk to us a little bit more about transitioning from this food service industry into consulting? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, a few years ago, people just started to ask my advice on you know projects. So I'd work with my peers and they'd be like, hey, what are your thoughts on this if we go in this direction? Or even leadership things where they're like, okay, I'm, I'm about to have this hard conversation. Can you walk me through? That would happen. And then few weeks, few days, few months later, I would come back and they'd have feedback on, you know, positive outcomes from the advice that I had given. And over time it became, you know, it started with peers and then it was in my team members and then it was other leaders. And then it was leaders that I had worked with that had moved on to other companies, helping with their companies. And so it just slowly grew into this business. And I continued to do that while I was working my full-time jobs and in going through my corporate career. And then ultimately in uh, the summer of this year, I decided to step away and just do that full time, working with a lot of small businesses, midsize. And I also work with corporations on more product base too. Would you say, Kayla, that you have a specialty when it comes to consulting? Consulting is obviously this really big umbrella, but is there a certain niche that you have in the field? I really focus on the most concise way to say is growth mode. So once a, a business knows, hey, we want to expand this product line or, hey, we want to you know, go into this market, I will be very transparent. I am not your, your sales uh, strategy person or your sales coach. I have crazy respect for people who are really great at sales. It's a very hard job uh, to have. But once you've decided, OK, we're rowing this direction or this general direction, I come in with the strategic development. How do we actually get there? And then the plans, the project plans of, okay, we know all the things we need. How do we actually get there? How do we sequence that work? And how we make sure that our leadership and our employees are on the same page? And that's really where I specialize. And it it sounds very broad, but as we start to work together, there's very specific things uh, that I do within that. But a lot of times you'll find like, you have these leaders who are incredible people leaders, but because they don't focus at all on performance, 
they have all these great human skills, but then their team's kind of rowing in a, a different direction in the company. Mm-hmm. And then on the other end, which we've seen for the last, you know, since the beginning of employer-employee relationships, the we only care about performance, we don't care about people. So my specialty is marrying those two so we can get performance, we can move the business forward, but we also bring, you know, the success for employees along with us. So Kayla, why would a business bring on a consultant for projects or even a part-time basis versus hiring someone full-time to fulfill that position? So when you hire someone full-time, yes, you know, they're there, they work in your business and they learn it, but they're coming in probably with their base knowledge and starting to learn your business as you want it or as it has already existed. When you bring in a consultant, they're going to bring in more expertise and they're going to bring in more perspective that you wouldn't get from someone that you might just hire to fulfill that role. So it's usually a a higher level perspective and coming with a lot more experience. And so while, you know, long-term you may decide, okay, yep, we want to bring someone in full-time once we have all of those things underway from a consultant. So the consultant actually might reveal to you more about what you need to grow as a business versus, okay, we're just going to keep adding you know, full-time people to our headcount, you know, we feel like we're just doing the same thing over and over again. I think you're talking about culture a little bit there too. If you hire somebody internal full-time, they've kind of got to acclimate to your culture and understand how that works versus having that outside perspective that, for example, you would bring Kayla. Yes, exactly. And I think a lot of organizations, they still have leaders who are learning how to take new uh, thoughts and ideas and really create a creative culture where people are willing to bring that. And so sometimes you'll hire a full-time person and even though they might have great ideas, they have a lot of potential, they're just not there yet. And sometimes your culture just isn't there yet either. So a consultant comes in and especially because, you know, they've either done the thing and they have a lot of perspective Generally, consultants have no problem saying, no, that's not the right direction, or "Mm, I think we might need to change that, or I see what you're trying to do. Let's work together to do it this way or that way. Versus, you know, a full-time employee, now you're their leader and and there's a different dynamic there. Well, I think that different dynamic is so crucial because, you know, when you hire somebody full-time, their goal is really to become a part of the company. So they don't always have that objective vision that someone like you, for instance, could step in. You're not trying to join and work with this company full time. What your main motive is, is really to propel them into that next level and then step away. Exactly. It's just a different dynamic when you're working as a consultant and you feel a lot more free and you're there to say the things that other people might be nervous to say or afraid to say, because at the end of the day, you're not there long term. Kayla, do you do uh, stuff in the nonprofit and public sectors in addition to some of the corporate private work you do? Yes. Actually, my favorite companies to work with, um, some of the ones that I've had so far have been nonprofit. I love you know my, my private clients as well um, or my for-profit clients, but nonprofits, it is such a different world and such a different experience. And the teams are really there for the best outcome of their mission. Whereas in a for-profit space, there's some elements of that that are there. But in nonprofit, it's like they have dedicated a lot to making sure that this mission is achieved. So I love working with nonprofits and it's a great experience no matter what business I work with so far. For me, I've had you know wonderful experiences. But yes, I do that as well. So how difficult is it for companies to implement the change when you're sitting down with them? No, oh, that's a great, <laughs> that is a great question. It really depends. And part of that is in that initial conversation that I have. So I always have like kind of an initial call before we agree to do business together. I'm checking for is the leadership on board with change? And that's the first thing. The actual change that's happening is not as important as are you even on board with change to begin with? Because I've worked with organizations where the leader's like, we need you know, more business. I'm willing to do whatever we need to do. And then I start talking about the things we need to do. And they're like, well, I don't want to do that. You know, it's like that meatloaf. Call on your <laughs> I'll do anything for my business, but I won't do that. And so I usually am I'm asking questions to make sure that they're on board uh, with change. And then once that happens, It's all about making sure that they're involved in every step of the process. And when I say they, I mean people at every level of the business because change management, which through growth, that's a lot of what I'm doing is helping facilitate change management. You need those people at every level who are excited about what you're doing. You need employees who are excited. 
need leaders who are excited and you definitely need executive leaders who are excited. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So I'm really focused on helping them get excited about it, but also bring them along, you know, use them to help make decisions and help design what it looks like in the future, because then there's some buy in there as well. Absolutely. Well, that's such a fascinating thing about change. It puts you into that uncomfortable zone. Most people do not want to step into that uncomfortable ring. And yet that's where the most growth happens. So I think it's fantastic that you're able to shed light and also kind of give them a direction and open up that platform for them to be able to step into that uncomfortable zone, but to do it with guidance. Kayla, you mentioned earlier you're starting your business in mid-2023. I know you joined the Royal Oak Chamber pretty quickly after starting your business. Can you talk about how the experience has been so far for you? Yeah, the Chamber has been fantastic. So I, you know, I've been doing this business kind of on the side for the last few years, but I really started it in mid-2023, as you mentioned. And from the first event that they joined the Chamber, it was like, oh, there's all these people and I want to introduce you to this person. And that was like, hey, do you want to have a meeting? you know, to talk about our businesses and how we can partner. And by the way, here's a client that I think you'd be great, you know, to work with. And it it was just fantastic. And awesome. The community of people that I met, every single person has been vibrant and warm and welcoming. And that was like incredible. You know, you come from the corporate world. Not everyone's like that in corporate world. You're (laughs) like, you know, it's it's very dynamic, I would say. But yeah, the chamber was fantastic. And even within Probably about a month in of joining the chamber, I started getting client referrals and started working with a client within a month of joining the chamber. So uh, it really was, you know, an incredible experience just coming on board in the chamber. But even since then, it's been great. And one of the best things for me is I have, you know, ebbs and flows in my business. So there are months yep. where it's like I can't really make it to any of the chamber events because my schedule is packed with clients. But Because there's so many different events at different times, I find a way to be like, okay, I'll go to this one event this month. And then all of a sudden, you know, my schedule opens up and now I can go to all of these things. And so even when you leave for a second and then come back, it's the same thing all over again. Everyone's like, oh, you know, we miss you or whatever it is. So it's it's a great community in my experience so far. It is like one big family. And that's the good thing about it. I mean, we all get busy with our businesses and our lives, but you can always step back and they'll be there. Yes. Yeah, that's so true. So Kayla, what do you do when you're not working? Do you have any favorite hobbies? Well, I do cook. I cook a lot uh, because that's <laughs> I like to keep those skills refined a little bit, even though I'm not in kitchens anymore. Um, I have a lot of time that I like to spend walking around in Royal Oak. Even sometimes I take calls there. So I, I do live in Royal Oak as well and like to take calls while I, you know, walk around and and uh, hang out. I think the city's been great. And uh, I love music and arts as well. So you find me a lot of times either uh, Royal Oak, surrounding city of downtown, art festivals, museums, those types of things. Are you from the area originally or? So originally I'm from Los Angeles, but I was mostly raised uh, in Southeast Michigan. So I, you know, lived in Dearborn, lived in Sterling Heights and uh, Bloomfield, but most recently I've come to Royal Oak. So this is a whole new kind of city for me to explore, which has been great. Very cool. Do you want to give your cat a shout out? I see them behind you. Oh, yeah. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, I have two cats. Uh, I have Mila, who's a a rag doll, and then I have Bean, uh, who's like a slender black cat. So Mila and Bean. Very cool. All right. It is now time for our fishbowl question of the day, where we ask you a totally random question. Lisa, would you please pull today's fishbowl question of the day? All right, Kayla. What's your worst habit? Ooh, (laughs) that is a great question. Worst habit? I bite my nails. I'll just put it out there. (laughs) Yeah, it's probably nail biting. Yeah, it's it's so funny because even though I've worked in restaurants and I know like everywhere your hands go, (laughs) uh, it's just I bite my nails. It's not even a nervous thing. It's like when I'm thinking, when I'm doing this or that. So um, sometimes I'll paint my nails just so I don't bite them because it's like a like restricts me from doing it. So yeah, probably nail biting is probably one of my worst, uh, worst habits. When I was a little kid in the 80s, there was this thing called, I think it was called thumb. It was like this thing that my parents would dip my fingers in that like tasted horrible. So it would try to like, <laughs> like dissuade me from biting my fingernails. But I started to like spicy food. So at the end, it kind of defeated the purpose. Your life wasn't that bad. You became an addict to it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Kayla, I want to thank you so much for coming on the podcast and, of course, for being part of the Chamber for so long now. We're thrilled to have you. If folks want to learn more about what you do, what are the best ways to contact you? Uh, so you can reach out to me directly, connect at KaylaLopez.work or go to goodbe.work. 
uh, and visit the Good Business website. Thank you, Kayla, for being on here. My name is Elisa Bibby. I am a realtor with Keller Williams Advantage, and I put the real back in realtor. We want you to love where you live. Questions about buying or selling a home? Call today. My website is soldbylisab.com, and you can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Instagram at Sold by Lisa B. And I am John Gay from Jagged Detroit Podcast. I'm the podcast guy. If you like the way this show sounds and want me to create a branded podcast for you or your business, you can find me online at jagindetroit.com or on social media at jagindetroit as well. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Rock Pod produced for the Royal Oak Michigan Chamber of Commerce. For more information about the chamber, events, how to get involved, you can visit royaloakchamber.com. Thanks, everyone. 